What's up everybody, Goat Toaster 9 JJ Shankles here. Today, the next generation of VR has arrived. The Valve Index both headset and Knuckles controllers are here in this box. I'm gonna unbox them, set them up, use them, and share with you guys some initial thoughts on it. Let's get to it. First things first, you gotta open it up. They do a good job at packing it in there really well. First, you got a smaller box, larger cardboard, I'm not going to jostle around and nothing else. Let's get that out of here. Probably warranty and instruction manual. Charging cable, wrist straps, and... So your hand goes in. So there's this loop down here you just pull. Put your hand in, pull this cable. Then on the other side there's a button and that releases it. Simple to strap it on and then, yeah, it's very easy to use and then let go. The whole idea behind this controller is in games you can throw stuff. So there's one one defect, it's the big controversy over it, is does the thumb pad, the joystick, you can't press in while around the edges. So if you're like pushing forward, walking in a game, you can't press down while pressing forward. And with these you can't, it'll, I usually don't play open world running games. You can to the sides. I can notice it to the sides. Backwards and forwards, it's not great if I'm pressing all the way forward. It seems decent, so I don't know if it's gonna be an issue. Let's try the other one. The right hand, put it on, tighten it up. It's very easy to just slip it on, tighten it up. You actually have buttons. I really like this over, that was the one downside I think to the Vive before. You didn't have buttons. To have buttons when you need them is nice sometimes. So with my right hand, I can press forward and then still be able to press down. It gives me a tactile bump, but then right and left, I can't. But then on my left hand, side to side, left and right, I can click down and get that tactile bump, but then forward and back, I can't. Interesting, but we'll see if that affects anything. So those are the knuckle controllers. Really excited for those. Now for the Valve Index. Open that up. This is a much bigger box. Same holographic tape down here. Got the symbol. Oh, look at just like glowing. It's amazing. It's such a sleek, shiny front to it. So I've only used the OG5, and this will be my second headset. So I've used the original Vive, and now this. Even after you get everything out, this is a heavy box. Okay, there's more in there. Um, ooh, that is very plush. So, let's get to it. And then a little box of accessories, I guess. Got a wall charger, very sturdy packaging. It feels like there'd be more in there. So now I'm gonna get this set up, get some first impressions. Let me try it out first. Here we go. Now that is some next level VR. So now that I've been using it for a couple weeks, I want to do a full breakdown of all the things that I loved about it, things I didn't like about it. And there were a ton of things I liked. I really do believe this is next generation VR. This is the next step up we've been waiting for. This is so much upgraded from the original Vive that I also use. And the Vive Pro, I've only used it out in demos at stores and such, but this is such an upgrade from that. So the first thing is the controllers. These controllers are amazing. You put them on and you grip them and they grip you back. It's very adjustable to hit, fit a lot of different hands. You're able to adjust this piece up here to make it fit for small hands or for large hands. And it really does feel good. There's this zip cord down here. You pull and it tightens up. Press a button, it releases immediately. Super easy to put on, tighten up, and you're playing. Take it off, pass it to the next person. Put it back on, tighten it up you're playing again. The button controls are the next big thing that I think is a huge upgrade from the Vive. I hated the Vive's giant touchpad, D-pad thing on there that it was touch sensitive but also had buttons and arrows. In certain games it just didn't really work. Having a, a solid joystick to do that is great. But there's also a capacitive slider here for scrolling through menus. You just scroll through that. So you still have the touch capabilities of that plus solid A, B buttons when you want to press a button. But the big thing, the big thing about this is the touch sensitive. Basically, it's all touch capacitive sensitive and it senses where your fingers are. You use it for a little bit and it knows, somehow it knows the difference between this finger and that finger. Like, 
my fingers are touching on the back. I didn't know how they'd do it. I thought there would be grooves on the back so your fingers would kind of be apart, but no, it's just one giant solid smooth piece. Your hands are all touching and it knows that this is gripped. There's also, so it's capacitive here if your thumb goes here or even over here, if your thumb goes to the left of here, it knows that thumb is down. There's a difference there and it knows and in game, it does a different thing with your hand. It's amazing how cool it is that you just you grab your hand. When you just grab something, it becomes so intuitive in a game to pick something up. And then, let me tighten this down, you throw it. And you throw the ball. A great example would be in Super Hot, when you pick up an item and then throw it again, you just you throw it and it stays there. It's not coming off. If you have fear of it, you tighten it up more. There's even an, ad an added wrist strap that you could attach to this put it on your wrist, but this is so solid on here. It's it's not coming off in normal gameplay, which is so immersive. Is one of the little parts of the Vive controllers that wasn't very immersive. You felt like you were holding a controller. It's just next level immersion into the gameplay. You feel like you're real. I think those are all the good things I have to say about the controller. There are some people who have problems with the joystick. It's kind of tricky to press forward and click down. I don't really like playing open world games in VR. I think that ruins the immersion to be pressing this and you're just sliding forward in the world. I like games where it's room scale, where you're walking around and that's all you have to interact with. I think those are great for VR. Great immersion, it's just not for me. So that really wasn't an issue for me. Some people are making a big deal about it. I didn't even notice it in any of the games I played. I didn't think it was an issue, some people do. Next we get onto the main attraction, the headset. This headset is leaps and bounds better than this headset is so much better than the original Vive. In almost every way, you put it on and it's that first feeling of feeling like you're stepping into VR again. Where the first time you put the Vive on, it's unworldly. It's way different than any little phone, Google Cardboard type thing. It really feels like you're there. But then it wears off after a while. After you played it for a couple months, it feels like you're putting the headset on. It doesn't feel like you're stepping into another world. This feels like you're stepping into another world again because that 120 hertz is so smooth, so fluid in games. You move your head and it moves with you all the time. Huge depth of field with this. Valve doesn't state a spec on what depth of field angles you get, but it's so, it feels like it wraps around you. I haven't tried the Pimax, so I can't compare it to the Pimax 5K or 8K. Those are stated at having a wider field of view. But some people have complained about some distortion you might get. This one, I got no distortion. I didn't notice any sort of wide field of view distortion on the edges. Another amazing thing is the, the Fresnel lenses. They still have Fresnels, so it's got all those rings around the lenses. Unlike the Samsung Odyssey, which has a, just a smooth lens on it. S smooth lenses, some people say you can have more distortion on the edges, but it's a wider sweet spot for what point in the middle is in focus. The OG Vive had a very small, narrow, point that was in focus and sharp. So to read text, you had to move your entire head. You couldn't move your eyes around a scene to see what's in focus. With this, you're able to move your eyes around again. And maybe it's just I've gotten used to moving my entire head when I'm in VR, but in this one, I do feel like I can move my eyes around and a lot of area is sharp and in focus and it's still very clear, unlike the OG Vive. Moving on, some other sm minor things. Down here, this is the IPD, the inner pupillary distance, the distance between your eyes. It's a slider, and I thought this wouldn't be as good as the OG Vive had a little dial on the edge, but the little dial, I don't feel like was changing it as much as I felt like I was turning it. It just seemed inconsistent. This one, it's a solid slider, and it just feels really smooth when you adjust it. I feel like I was able to dial it in way better with this one, and you move it, and it feels like it really is changing things. You change little amounts on the dial on the Vive and you just don't feel it as much. Over on the other side, there's a single button, sort of your turn on button. The audio on this one is another big feature that I thought I wasn't gonna like, I thought I was gonna hate it. They're open back off the ear headphone. And I love how the ear cups would fit directly right on your ear and you really could feel it sitting on there. The surround sound was amazing. I was thinking it's gonna be sitting off the ear. How is it gonna be as good? And it's way better. These little headphones, they're off your ear. You feel the immersion way better than when it's on your ear. I don't know how they do it. It's magic of wizardry, science, and computers, but they do it. It's amazing. The comfort of this one is also really outstanding. These smooth pads on the back are incredibly soft, incredibly smooth. The eyepiece ones, 
it's just super plush. It feels, it fits so well every time you put it on. This single dial in the back, dial it in, tight, loosen it up. It just feels really well made, really solid. So I think that just about does it and wraps up my review for the Valve Index. Next generation VR is now here, but the software and games really aren't there to match it. There's only a handful, maybe 10, 15 games that even includes the whole Knuckles controller being able to actually grab stuff with it. It's cool and exciting where it's going, and I'm really excited to see it in new games that come out that are designed specifically for the Knuckle controllers. I know some people have some problems with the controllers, and it seems to be batch per batch. Some controllers work better than others. I think my right hand, which is the right hand one, I think works better than my left-handed one. So it's even in my kit, one of them works better than the other. Some people hate it, some people love it. Mine happened to be a good batch that showed up. So it wasn't as big of a deal for me. So that concludes the review. Hope you liked it. If you like this, go down below, hit the like and subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming videos coming out. And if you have any more questions about the Valve Index down below, let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you with an answer. Thank you guys, hope you had a great day. Go Toaster out.